ever been hungry? And not in a uh, casual sense, like you just worked hard all day in the fields and you're coming back for the evening meal, but truly hungry, bone achingly, morning where it saps your strength, and you realize that if you don't have sustenance, you will die. Have you ever suffered the pain of seeing your family members go through the same agony and have no way to alleviate your suffering? I have. My name is Reuben. I'm the son of Jacob, or as or else is known, Israel. And we're Hebrews, we're sojourners in the land of Canaan. And this hunger was the source of a famine, a, a two-year famine that had created Canaan and the entire known world. Um, and there's no end in sight. Uh, our father decided to send me and my brothers. I had nine brothers. Well, I had nine brothers who were going with me. We have a large family, and we heard that Egypt had grain. We weren't sure exactly how the famine had struck the entire known world, but we were told that there was grain in Egypt, and the only way that we were going to eat is if we went and found grain in Egypt. So my father instructed me, as the eldest, and nine of my brothers to go down to Egypt and to purchase grain for the family. He decided, though, to keep one brother behind, which is our, our youngest brother, Benjamin. A predictable choice. I kind of expected him to. And as a younger man, this might have caused me to be a little angry, spiteful even, that he had shown such treatment towards Benjamin. But I understood why he was doing it. Benjamin was his youngest son and was the only remaining son of his most treasured wife, Rachel. This sort of treatment was something that we expected as brothers of our father Jacob. It's something that he showed towards our second youngest brother, Joseph. And as a younger man, it inspired anger jealousy and spite in me. And it caused this as brothers who my brothers shared my emotions when we had seen our, uh, our youngest brother's preferential treatment to, uh, to lead us into one of the most terrible decisions of our lives. And we took the opportunity when we were leading our father's herds north in, in Canaan, away from uh, our encampment as, as a family. He sent our, uh, our brother Joseph out to find us. We saw him in the distance, as angry as we were, we hated him because of the preferential treatment he, he received. We saw the opportunity to, to strike, and as a group, we sold him into slavery to a caravan of Midianites. So we understood. After we returned and pawned off our crime on a, uh, on a wild animal, and our father showed so much grief at our brother's demise, it almost killed him why he decided to uh, keep Benjamin behind. And after many years of, of regret and seeing our father's condition, each one of us eventually came to a place of understanding why this would happen. I mean, it was his son, and we understood perfectly, with calm acceptance now, why he would keep Benjamin behind without reservation. So we went as a group of 10 down to Egypt to buy grain. And we, uh, we approached the man, we were told we were to buy grain from a powerful administrative official in Egypt. A man we were told had the second most power in Egypt, second only to Pharaoh. We approached him, and we were as polite as we could be. We bowed before him. We told him what, what we wanted. We wanted grain. We had the, the necessary silver. We, we were his servants who would come and purchase the grain in order to sustain our families. And like many other people who had come before us, I expected him to give us what we, what we needed for our silver, but he didn't. His reaction was puzzling to me, and it was, it was quite unusual. He, was, he grew angry with us. And clearly by his, his eyes and by his tone, I couldn't understand what he was saying as an Egyptian. He had an interpreter to speak with us from Canaan. But I knew he was angry. And he exclaimed that we were spies, and we had come to, to seek out the undefended parts of the land. As brothers, we were shocked by this, and we had given no indication at all that we were spies. We couldn't understand how we would respond this way. We explained, we're, we are ten brothers, all from one father in the land of Canaan. But he insisted, no, you are spies. You've come to see the undefended parts of the land. We said to again, no, my, my, my lord, your servants are our ten brothers. Our father is in the land of Canaan, and our youngest brother is with him, and our other brother is no more. The man wouldn't, wouldn't have it, though continued to insist we were spies. 
and said that the only way we could prove our innocence was to go and to get our youngest brother that we had talked about and bring him back to show him. And then he threw us into prison. All of us. The, the plan that he had, he had laid out included that we would, that nine of us would remain with him in Egypt and one would go, uh, would go get Benjamin, our youngest. But he threw, off, threw all of us into prison for three days and gave us some time to think. I was worried. I was worried about this plan because I knew if only one person went back, he wouldn't definitely not have enough grain to feed our families. It wouldn't solve the problem. In fact, it would get dramatically worse. I wondered about the fate of our, of our families back in Canaan. But I knew as, as brothers, a, a deeper and a more sober thought dwelled in the back of our minds, unspoken at the time. We wondered if this was God's judgment and justice for what we had done to Joseph finally catching up to us. Here we dwell in the land of Egypt, in prison for a crime we did not commit. And I had to wonder. I remember growing up, my, my father would tell me stories of, of, of our heritage, of the people who come before us. He'd tell me stories about Isaac, his father, and my, grand, my great-grandfather, Abraham, and of stories that came far before them. And one story in particular, no doubt, came up in my brother's mind as well as my own. I thought of Cain his brother Abel. I thought of the crime that Cain had committed against Abel and God's judgment against him. He had not escaped. And up to this point, and it had been many years, we have. We hadn't suffered for what we had done. But here we were. I thought this is our, this is our time. All the same, though, three days later, the administrative official brought us out of, out of prison and gave us a different deal, one that assuaged some of our concerns. He said that only one of you were in Nine will go back to Canaan to get your brother. And only then will you see my face. And only then can you clear your name and get your last brother. While this solved our grain concerns, we'd be able to feed our families with this. We now brought back together, voiced our original concerns <coughs> of God's justice. We asked and we thought, was this God's punishment for what we had done to Joseph. And I, I turned to my brothers and I said, and I reminded them of my words that I spoke so long ago. I said, you idiots, come on. I told you at the time, do not sin against the boy. Because I had him. Long ago, when, when this incident initially happened with Joseph, and Joseph came in the distance, my brothers wanted to kill him. But I told them, now throw him into the cistern. No need to shed his blood. At the time, I thought I was going to go get him afterwards. I lift him out and bring him back to my father and present him to him. Not only was he my brother, and while I surely did not like him very much, and I can tell you that I didn't, I hoped that maybe it would uh, repair my relationship with my father a little bit. Uh, Jacob and I hadn't been on best of terms after I slept with his wife. It was a stupid <coughs> choice, and it uh, kind of ruined our relationship. So I thought maybe, just maybe, this could repair the, the bond a little bit. I could return his son, his precious son, safe and sound. But I wasn't given that chance. The natural leader amongst our brothers, because I can firmly admit now that that was something I was not. Judah spoke up and came up with a true win-win situation for our brothers. We can get rid of Joseph. Look, a caravan of Midianites approach. Let's sell him to him. We can make some money from him. We'll never have to deal with him again. And they did. I told them, I reminded them, we shouldn't have sinned against the lad. Now, comes the recompense for his blood. All the same, though, the, the Egyptian administrative official took Simeon from us, who was, my, uh, who was our second oldest brother. He spared me, for whatever reason. And uh, we went back to Egypt. And we tried to present the situation to our father in a way that he would accept. But we knew that he wouldn't. We described what had happened. We described it the the Egyptians' response to us, his, his anger towards us, the insistence that we were spies. And we had told him what had happened to Simeon. And he responded as, as I thought we would, as he thought we would, or as he would, with grief. Joseph is lost to me, so now is Simeon, and you 
you wish to take Benjamin as well? Are all these things stacked against me? I, I tried to plead with him. I tried to say, Father, I, I'll take personal charge of the boy. You give him to me. You could put my, son, my two sons to death if I don't bring him back safely to you. But he wouldn't listen to me. He didn't listen to me very often. So we stayed in the land. We ate what grain we could. We survived. But we all knew what was coming. This wasn't going to... The amount of grain that we had purchased wasn't going to uh, allow us to survive the famine completely, and it was still going, as strong as ever. So the time came when we land, ran low on grain, and we came to our and, our, and our father told us again, go down to Egypt and buy grain. And we reminded him, we can't. We need Benjamin in order to do so. And he looked at us. You can still picture the anger and he asked us, well, why in the world, what, what prompted you to mention Benjamin in the first place? Why would you do that? And we, we told him, you know, come trying to defend ourselves the best we could. We said, the man who asked the questions was very, very inquisitive about our family. He asked penetrating questions about Benjamin and about you. And, and we answered honestly, we had no idea that this is what he was going to do, that he would request Benjamin's presence. And then Judah spoke up. My plea had failed, so Judah was going to step in where I, I couldn't. He said that he would take responsibility for the lad. That if any harm came to him, punishment would fall upon him. That he would bear responsibility. I don't know if it was Judah's persuasiveness or simply the persuasiveness of hunger, but Jacob agreed. He would send us back to Egypt with Benjamin. And he would also send us with payment for the future grain and with payment for the, uh, the grain that we had brought back originally. Because when we had returned home, we discovered the grain in the mouth of our sacks. And we couldn't understand how that had happened, what the Lord was doing to us, what kind of, what kind of judgment was possibly being initiated here. It was beyond our comprehension how we could have the money still in our sacks. So we would bring that money as well in, in any effort to persuade the Egyptian that we were honest, man, that we weren't spies. And we came with gifts from the land. The best of the land could offer honey, pistachio nuts, and almonds. And I'm sure there are other things, but mainly I focused on the food because it was good food. And I uh, did my very best not to eat it on the way down to Egypt. But we returned to Egypt with the very intention to present our gifts and to portray <coughs> ourselves as honest men. And the servants of the Egyptian met us and brought us to, our, to his house. And we were a little concerned. This was a much different greeting than the one we received the first time. Because they intended for us to eat with him. After the hostility of our first visit to Egypt, this sort of invitation caused us to be suspicious. We wondered if he had learned about the silver that we had made off with unintentionally and desired to punish us for it. We expressed our concerns and had told the servant, we brought back the silver and we brought more silver to buy to buy grain with. But he said not to be worried. The Lord our God had returned the silver to us. That wasn't exactly an answer we were expecting. Coming from a group of men who were expecting judgment to receive back silver from the Lord, we didn't exactly, it was peculiar. We couldn't really get our heads around that. It was only the first peculiar thing to happen in the night, really, because true enough, the Egyptian official came and ate with us. And we had a pretty good time. He gave us as much food as we could have wanted. But the most peculiar thing of the night was the fact that we sat in order of our age. How could he possibly know the age of each man there? We're all grown at this point. And while surely I, as Reuben, would look different from Benjamin being the youngest, my guess is it would be difficult for a stranger to tell apart some of our middle brothers in age. Heck, sometimes we have a big family. I lose track of who's who in the whole line. <laughs> But we sat perfectly according to our age. And Benjamin, who was the youngest, received five times the amount of food that we did. Again, as a younger man, this might have irked me, but honestly, I was just simply so surprised by the action and about everything else I'd seen that night that I just noted it. But we all did. And we ate to our heart's content, and we rose the next morning. And life was good. We received the best situation possible. We had grain now, as he filled our sacks. 
We had Simeon again. He'd been presented to us. And Benjamin was safe. And we were eager to get on the road and put as much distance between us and Egypt and get back to our father. We were surprised and a little cautious, though, when on the road we looked behind and the servants of the official were riding behind us. They came to us. We were cautious. And they gave us this question when they, they reached us. They said, How, why have you done this? Why have you stolen our master's cup? We, his cup of divination. And we thought, this is ridiculous. We didn't steal your master's cup. We, didn't, we just proved we're honest men. We were, we were flabbergasted and a little fronted. We brought the silver back. We brought Benjamin. What else do you want from us? Search our sacks. Search everything. The man that you find this supposed cup with, let him die, and the rest of us will be slaves. Go ahead. And they did. They started with my bag, and sure enough, they opened up, and I knew there wasn't anything in there, so I, I wasn't worried. Then they got to Simeon's and Levi's, and I was a little concerned. I mean, Simeon just spent a long time in prison under this man's hand. Perhaps he thought this would be a good opportunity to get some little revenge. And, you know, Levi was always his uh, partner in crime. That ugly business at Shechem confirmed that. But sure enough, it wasn't in their sacks either. And down the line, each of my brothers went through their stuff, and there wasn't anything there. They got to Benjamin's sack. I was, I was sure it wouldn't be there. I started to pack up and get ready to get up back on the road. All of us did. Completely convinced we were in the, in the clear. They opened his sack, and there was the cup. We were shocked. Absolutely shocked. We couldn't believe what we had just seen. We didn't know what to make of it. I honestly didn't think it was Benjamin, but was this God's judgment of us to punish Benjamin for something that we had done? That didn't seem to fit either. We didn't know what was happening. We tore our clothes in grief because we knew now what it meant. We had made the promise. Whatever man has the cup, he's going to die, and we're all going to be slaves. And honestly, I wouldn't mind for my own fate. I deserved it. I was a part of the crime against Joseph. I deserve the fate that he had. But for Benjamin to die in this way, essentially killing our father, I couldn't accept it. They brought us, we went back to his house. We were desperate. We'd do anything at this point to avoid this fate. In Judah, always the leader spoke up on our behalf. He pleaded with the man. He, he recounted what had happened, and using as respectful tones as possible, but you could tell he was desperate. He was absolutely desperate. He, he told of our father and what this would mean to him. They would kill the old man. He recounted the, the incidents of, of what it led to it, that, that it was the Egyptian himself that had requested Benjamin's presence. And our father resisted, but we brought him down anyway. And lastly, and this is what amazed me so much, is, is Judah's request. I can, I can still see him. It's the absolute wild desperation in his eyes. He told the man, free the boy. Take me instead. I will be his slave. Just let him return to his father. And the absolute contrast of this situation for what happened to Joseph previously, I mean, Benjamin was was the youngest of us all, but at the time, he looked a lot like Joseph standing right there, the child of, of Jacob and Rachel. And in a similar situation, so long ago, Jake, Judah was completely willing to send Joseph to slavery for his own benefit, but here is the exact opposite. Judah was completely willing to take Benjamin's spot, to go into slavery in order to spare his brother. A repentance that was complete in, in, in every way. I watched the Egyptian, hoping to see some flicker of response, and he watched us silently. The interpreter blandly repeating Jacob's hurried and, and desperate words. And, and I started in, well, I saw him to start to tear up a little bit, which I, I couldn't believe. And he barked an order in Egyptian, and everyone left him, including the interpreter. He started to sob. Completely, in, in a way that was, well, we were shocked. 
We didn't know what to make of what was happening. I mean, this is, this is the second most powerful man in Egypt just completely crying before us for what we, you know, I couldn't see how Judah's story touched him that much, but there he was doing this. And then he spoke. And he said that, that he was Joseph. And at first I, I dismissed it. He, he said that he was Joseph, but how, how could that be, really? Joseph was either dead or in a place that I would, an unimaginable place in his life. I mean, that couldn't be possible. And I, I was angry, what kind of sick joke could this be? But the events of the past couple days started to trickle back to me. Our seating at the table, the man's insistence when he gave us our second offer, bringing us out of prison, that he was a fear of God. Everything started to trickle back, and I I thought, this, this might be, he asked about the concern of our, well, he asked about the well-being of our father, and, and, I, and I looked at him, and the man that I saw before me was very different from the youth we had sold so long ago, but I started to see characteristics, facial characteristics, that resembled our own and closely resembled Benjamin's, and the truth dawned on me. It felt like every nerve in my body was on fire in that moment. It just, I can't even explain what I felt. Initially, there was fear in my own faith. That dissolved quickly. Whatever he would do to me in this case, I deserved it. Instead, there was just utter shame. Shame of what I had done to him, and now I was giving account that this weeping man before me is the one that I had sold into slavery. But he continued, I am Joseph, who you sold into slavery in Egypt. And the words that he spoke weren't angry. They weren't judgmental. They, they, they weren't full of condemnation. They were full of love and a desire for reconciliation. And he spoke that God had sent him ahead of us to preserve our remnants on the earth of our family. I honestly couldn't fully wrap my head around what was happening. It, it was beyond anything I could have expected. And my brothers felt the same way. We were stunned. We didn't say anything. And he told us to go, to go as quickly as possible and to tell our father what had happened. That he was a strong advisor to Pharaoh, the lord of his house, the ruler of Egypt. And that he should come and dwell in the land of Goshen. Land that I knew was, was perfect for herdsmen. He brought us closer to him, and he moved among us, weeping as he did, and he, he met Benjamin first. Benjamin didn't share our reaction, he didn't share our guilt. He wept too. The reaction and the meeting was, was, was joyous and, and full of love. And then he came amongst each one of us. And we were so shocked still that emotion didn't quite come, but we still spoke with him. That was something we hadn't done in a really long time. Even before we had sold him to slavery, we hated him to the point where we couldn't speak with him in a friendly way, but now we were. Gone was the spite and the jealousy the shame itself even was gone for a moment, placed only with the realization this was our brother. And if what he spoke was true, that God had, had guided him to this place before us, I, I couldn't even begin to think what that meant. That God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, would use our greatest mistake as a blessing for us? That he would preserve us as, as a family through what we had done? We were expecting judgment. This wasn't something we were all going to anticipate. My, my understanding of the Lord did change. He was a God that was sovereign, but loves us to the point where He wants our benefit. He 
led to the reconciliation of our family and to our preservation, a place where we never deserved it. For that, I am incredibly 